talk about uh, section 4.3, which is your introduction to the number E. And so we start with um, exponential functions with base E, and we graph those and solve some problems with those. All right, but E is a really big concept. Um, and I know that seems like a strange idea, a number called E, but E is another thing like uh, pi and i, okay, like pi and i. It's an irrational number, um, and actually the value of E is about 2.718. What you really need to remember is E is about 2.718. Okay, you don't have to memorize any more digits than that. But you really do have to memorize this. This is some very, very important number that you need to know what it is you're looking at when you see E. Okay, uh, this was discovered by Euler, Leonhard Euler. Um, and we call it natural base E, number E, something like that. Okay. Um, and it says as n gets bigger, as n gets bigger and going towards infinity, this expression approaches e. Okay, and then they have some examples here to show you what happens uh, when n gets bigger. So if n gets to 10 to the sixth power, very, very big number, then this expression becomes 2.718. Two eight, which you can see is uh, getting closer to the number e, the actual value of e. Okay, and so the real value of e here is uh, this, and actually we would write it like this: the limit as n approaches infinity of one plus one over n to the n. is the number we call E, which is approximately 2.7182, so, so, so. Okay, and so this is just, this is the notation to show you what we're talking about here. Uh, this expression will eventually become equal to that thing, right, as n gets very big, n going towards infinity. Okay, so, um, any case, for you, the main thing is just know that E is an irrational number and E is very, very important in all kinds of problem solving. Uh, chemistry, physics, uh, finance, all kinds of areas, the, the number E is heavily, heavily used. It has some very special properties in calculus as well. Okay, So we're first going to do some simple examples where you just try and uh, get familiar with E and see what we're talking about. Um, you know, so you don't get confused between e and some in a variable, and then, um, yeah, and then we will uh, graph some. Okay, so uh, simplify the expression. Just saying, uh, I have e times e. Remember, that e is just a number. Okay, it's not a variable; it's just a number. But e to the seven times e to the four, the rule is still the same, it's just seven plus four, the exponential rules remain, so you get e to the eleventh. All right, and then here, same thing, two times six, 12, and then e to the negative three plus five, so you would just get 12 e to the two. All right, uh, and please forgive my note sheet for these weird question mark things when it exported Microsoft Office, uh, I guess, got a little bit confused. Um, any case, so um, C is this, 24 over 4, of course, is 6, and then 8 minus 5 is just E to the third. Nothing new here, same exponential rules. Just remember, E is just a number. E is 2.718 approximately, okay? And then here, apply this again, so this is 10 to the third, and e to the negative 4x needs to get multiplied by 3 as well. So uh, 10 to the third is 1,000. Okay, 1,000. And then e to the negative 4x times 3 would be negative 12x. Okay, just a review of your exponential rules. Just to get you familiar with e, e is not a variable. 
Okay, so actually you could come up with an answer here if you plugged in an x value. Uh, here we could approximate all of these on your calculator. Okay. All right, so there's that. And then uh, example two just says use your calculator to evaluate the expression. And you will see on your calculator there is a E button. Okay, and the E button, I can't show it to you right now unfortunately, but the E button uh, is accessed by pushing second and LN. There's an LN button, okay? So just do second and then LN. There's a capital LN button on your calculator. And that gives, gives you E to a power, all right? And again, I apologize here. This got messed up. It's E to the fourth, uh, and this is e to the negative 0 0.09 and so what you have here if you do e to the fourth in your calculator you just get uh, about 54.598 because it's 2.718 to the fourth power and if you do this of course a, a, a base to a negative exponent is actually 1 over the base to the positive exponent. So this is actually going to be a smaller number, which is 0 0.914, if you did that on your calculator. Okay? Um, so, that's example 1 and 2. Just a little small introduction to uh, letter E. And then here is uh, example 3 is asking us to graph... And then example four and five are just um, applying formulas involving E. All right, so uh, example three says graph the function, state the domain range. Okay, but you should be okay with what's going to happen here um, because this is not anything different. We've already been graphing exponential functions. Uh, what I have here is an exponential function with an a value of 3, and this is my b value, this is my base. But you, if uh, e is 2.718, then you should understand that this should be a growth function, okay, exponential growth function. And then 0.25x, um, that's not a translation left or right, and there's no, because uh, that would be a minus h value or a plus k, but those are not there. So this is not translating left or right or doing anything like that. This affects the steepness of the graph, okay, the 0.25. So that's not something that you really have to worry about too much. We haven't actually learned any of that, okay? Um, so you're just making a table for this exact function. So this is our um, y equals a times b to the x. This is exactly it. So we just make a table for that exact function. Uh, again, you can pick uh, values like negative 1, 0, 1, and then uh, plug stuff in. So you get 3e to the 0 0.25 times negative 1, uh, and that is 3e to the negative 0 0.25. And again, punch that on your calculator. There's no way you can figure that out by in your head. And you get 2.3. Okay. Then we get 3e to the 0 0.25 times 0, which is 3e to the 0, which is 3. And then 3e to the 0 0.25 times 1. Uh, and that is just 3 times e to the 0 0.25, and that's approximately 3.9 if you punch that in your calculator, okay? So practice punching this in your calculator, practice going along with this, because uh, the letter e, or the number e, I should say, is a bit new to you, okay? In any case, if you have this, let's see, it looks like it's going to be a growth function, negative 1, 2.3 is over here, uh, 0, 3 is over here, and then 1, 3.9 is, I mean, it's so hard to draw these small decimal numbers, like right over there, okay? Uh, and remember, just like any exponential function, this is an exponential function that has an asymptote at y equals 0, unless we translate it. So this is what the function is going to look like. 
exponential growth function that goes towards the asymptote like that. Okay, and then we can write the domain and range. The domain for all exponential functions, like we said, is this, and the range starting at zero and going to infinity, but not touching zero because of the asymptote. So uh, zero is an open parenthesis. Nothing new here. Okay, and then the next one. This is tricky. This is tricky because now we have a negative exponent. Okay. This is tricky. I don't know if we've done one of these before, but um, again, forgive me for this weird uh, question mark stuff going on here. It's just the export of the PDF that went nuts. Um, any case, so so what we have here is this function, but this looks like it's going to be interesting. So I would actually suggest if you see a negative exponent function, uh, just rewrite it, okay, so that you understand what you're talking about. This is actually y equals... If I make the exponent positive, this whole exponent has a negative in front of it. So if I make it positive, I do this. I say, take the reciprocal of the base, which is e, and then get uh, negative 0 0.75 times x minus 2 plus 1. Okay? Uh, and so this is what I have. Um, for my function. And now you can see the base that we have is actually um, a fraction. Uh, 1 over e is a fraction, and that fraction is actually smaller than 1, but bigger than 0. So this would be an exponential decay function. Now you can punch this in your calculator, 1 over e, and you'll see that you get approximately 0 0.3 six, seven, nine, something like that, okay? So this is a fraction between zero and one. So this was a growth function. This is going to be, because of the base being smaller than one, this is going to be a decay function, okay? And so now we know what to expect from that. And so we can graph it, just make a table, x and y. And plug in numbers, negative 1, 0, 1. And remember, now we do have translations going on here. So we're not going to graph the whole function with the translations. That's not how we do it. We make a table for this function initially. Um, y equals 1 over e to the negative 0 0.75x. Uh, okay. So if you distribute this in here, uh, that's... The function we're going to get okay and then um, we're going to graph that and then we're going to translate it all right so let's graph this one over e and so we plug this into our calculator let's do this so i get or or alternatively sorry i put a negative here <laughs> uh, of course this should be positive This should be positive. So forgive me if there. This should be positive if you've done that. Uh, and so you're going to get, uh, just push this in your calculator, 1 over e to the 0 0.75 and put in negative 1. And you get about, uh, what do you get? Let me punch this in. I don't think I have this. This is e to the uh, let's see, becomes e to the 0.75 or 1 over e to the negative 0.75. Okay, to the negative 0.75. Mm. Uh, forgive me for a second here. e to the... Okay, so you get about... If you punch this new calculator, you get about 2.5. One, two-ish, all right? That's fine, that's fine. Uh, and then next one, if you punch this in your calculator, one over e to the 0 0.75 times zero, you get approximately one, because that's anything to the zero power is one. And then if we do uh, e, one over e to the 0 0.75 times one, if you do that, uh, 
Um, what do you get? What do you get? What is this? Uh, 1 over E Uh, and then raise that to the power of this. Yeah, you get about a four point, a point four seven two. Okay, so again, these ugly decimal things are hard to graph. Please don't let that get you down. Uh, but you you just need to get the gist of the function, the right shape, all that kind of stuff. And so let's see what we get here. If we graph this. Uh, negative 1 is 2.12, a little bit above 2, okay, at negative 1, and then the next one, 0, 1, all right, good, and then 1.47, uh, so 1.47, so that's about here, hard to graph that uh, precisely, okay, um, and then we're going to take that and translate it. Oh, I wonder if I did that correctly. Okay, we're gonna take that and translate it, and I'll check this in a second. Let me see if I did that correctly. I'm actually gonna graph this to double check myself because I am I have a different graph here on my uh, completed note sheet. Let me check this, okay? Um, this is e to the negative 0.75 times x minus 2 and plus 1, okay. Uh, let's take this out. Sorry guys, just give me one second. Let me see what I've got going here. I just don't want to show you the wrong thing. Okay, that looks correct. All right, so uh, remember our asymptote is actually here. Okay, and then I have this going on. Here's my exponential function. But remember, we don't want to graph this yet because we want to translate, okay? So we've got this, we want to translate. So I've got uh, minus two and then plus one. So the minus two is my h and the plus one is my k. And if it says minus two, we go to the right actually two units. So I'm going to go to the right two units here. Okay, so there's my next point and then two units to the right here. And then two units to the right here. Okay, and then this says, uh, the h value says go up one. So let me switch to yet another color, go up one. So I'm going up one, I'm going up one, and I'm going up one. Okay, and remember your asymptote needs to get translated up one as well. So here is my asymptote. And so here's my final function that I've got going here, something like this. Okay, and so you can see what we thought in the beginning is correct. It is a decay function, and it's just been translated a little bit. All right, uh, and so what we have here is all of that looks good. Uh, let's talk about domain again. Domain for our exponential functions is always this, and the range it starts here at one and goes up forever. So one to infinity. Uh, remember, it's it's one because my k value is one, my asymptote is one, all right? So that's example three, nothing very, very new there. We'll come back and do example uh, four and five in the next video.